Hi guys, welcome to Always the Wild Ones. If it's your first time here, my name is Vanessa Lee. And as the title suggests, I've had to learn some hard lessons. I've had to learn the hard way. Using a plant is sometimes the only way to learn. Let me just put up some footage. This is my Hoya Crohanianum-esque Super Silver. And I've had this plant now for over a year and I can hardly believe at how gorgeous this plant has grown or had, let's say, had grown and bloomed again and again. The blooms are absolutely stunning. They're so pretty. They're like these little white fluffy balls of oh, yummy hoy hoyness. And um, the scent that comes from this plant is it's so pretty. It's really lovely. Anyway, so brace yourself, guys. You, I'm just going to show you. Yep, look at this horrendous mess. Luckily, I did take some cuttings before it went, went, well, before it got to this stage, I did take some cuttings, um, which I have in the kitchen and I do have some up on my Hoya wall on the pin board, which I will probably go and grab just now so I can show you what's going on with those dudes. They seem fine. So firstly, the plant had mealybug, and it was living in a very small container. It was actually a jam, jam jar. And the plant was actually really big. And then I thought, ah, then I took some cuttings. I decided to take some cuttings. Now this plant, I don't know. Let me know guys, if you've had the same experience, but. <gasps> what? That's quite gross. It's like two flying. Two things flying, but you know what they were doing. Right across the camera there. Hello, how cheeky is that? What on earth? Okay, where was I? Okay, so, uh, yeah, so I took some cuttings. And I noticed that where I took the cuttings, I got, just got to put this plant down. Um, where I took the cuttings, um, the part that was on the, the mother plant, the stem, kind of died back right underneath the next two leaves. Um, it didn't seem to like being pruned. So I think in the future I won't do that. Definitely won't do that. Okay, then the next thing um, I decided I need to get it out of this jam jar. So I decided to repot the plant and instead of going up just one size, knowing full well that Hoya roots like to be snug, I decided to go up, I think, two sizes. I'll put in some footage also of when it was first, you know, potted up. It looked fine. It looks fine. It looked absolutely gorgeous in its new vessel. Um, but in hindsight, the vessel was larger, therefore the substrate was holding more water. Now, Hoyas do not like to be sat in water. They actually like to dry out. And I just feel that this yellowing is from overwatering. Basically, it's in way too much substrate for the amount of roots, although there were a lot of roots, but again, Hoyas do like to be snug. Should have just left the plant in the jam jar. It wasn't showing any signs that it needed to come out of that jam jar. It was just all in my head and I just decided to go ahead and do it. But <sighs> but I have learned a very, very, very valuable lesson. Do not upsize your Hoya pots 
to much more than one size. I will never do this again, never. I will never do it. And secondly, if your plant is going through some distress because it might have mealybug, again, do not repot. It's already stressed out. Why did I stress my plant out more? It's, I, I really, I honestly don't know what I was thinking. I was just, you know, Um, I was actually thinking in the beginning it may have been the change of fertiliser because I did run out of liquid gold leaf, which is what I normally use with my plants. And I bought some, let me show you what I did buy actually. I bought this from the store that I work at and it's for hydroponic plants. It's called Butanic Lifestyle. It's a Butanic superfood and it's for hydroponic plants, like, like I said. Um, so I started using this. So, you know, that additional shock as well, not so great. Now I think I should just go into what I'm gonna do next. So with this part of the plant, I think I will unpack it. I am gonna try and trim off as much as I can and try and save as much as I can. Before that, I'm just gonna show you the parts that I have rescued. So it's not all bad news. Okay, don't get excited. <laughs> it's not a lot of plant that I've got saved, but I have this, which is completely rooted, and we have, I saved pedungles. So I think there's one, two, three, four pedungles on this plant, and they don't look like they're going to dry up anytime soon. So I'm really pleased with this one. This is under some plant lights. Um, on, and it's on my pin board, so that's why there's this clip at the back. And I can put in some footage if you, it's your first time here and you haven't seen my pin boards, I can do that. But yeah, so we've got this little guy here. Um, I've also got some cuttings in water, which I kind of recently took. They've probably been in water for about, I would say two weeks. The one has definitely rooted. Oh, I don't know how easy it's going to be to get them out. Oh, they're going to have to come out of here pretty soon. Let me just hold it up. But yeah, you can kind of see that there are roots in there. The one has definitely rooted more than the other. And then I've also got a pedungle on this one because the main plant was just, I should have actually counted up the pedungles. There's, there's a lot or there were a lot. Um, and then I've got two more pieces here, which have rooted quite nicely. You can see that. And I will need to pop this up pretty soon, actually. I might attempt to put it with this one. And then just like, it'll be just that bit bushier. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think I might just let the roots grow a little bit longer. Let me actually take them out so that you can have a look at these roots. So they're still quite dinky, but I think once they go in pond, they will just kind of expand. Oh, is that a bit soggy on the bottom there? Might need to cut that off. Maybe it is time to take these out of water. And then on this one also, we've got some nice roots. So I'm happy um, the bottom's not feeling too soggy, which is great. And um, we've got that pedungle, so it's looking happy and healthy this bit. For now. <laughs> and let's see if I can actually get these out of here because that is slightly worrying. This is the one that doesn't have many roots. Oh no, and it's the one with the pedungle. But actually this root up here looks like it could activate. So I might just try and, do you know what? I think I might repot all of this. Um, okay, so that's that one. 
And then this guy, we're gonna have to try and tug her out. Yes, that's okay. We didn't lose anything, good. And then this one's got some dinky little roots as well. Maybe I'll pot these all up together in a separate pot. That's probably the smarter move, actually. So I will do that. And then this one, I'm gonna put back in here. I think I'm gonna leave this one. I actually, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how we go. Um, I think this one. I'm just gonna add a little bit more water. She I've got a little bit of fertilized water. So yeah, it's my little squeezy bottle. Excuse the algae. I just can't seem to get rid of it. Um, yeah, it's got fertilizer in there for my hoyas. So I will. Just top that up and see if we can activate those top roots. Okay, so I'm gonna put these back on the windowsill actually for now, and we'll just go ahead and unpack this plant. So, my gosh. Let's get in there. I mean, it's the saddest day in the world. Maybe we can save some of it, hopefully. I'm seeing pedungles on this thing. Oh my God. <laughs> and with Hoyas, it's best to just kind of start again when it comes to trying to get the roots to grow again. Again, it's looking quite knotty. Cut that off. Um, oh, it's really sticky as well. And there's a little bit here. Try and get that. Don't even know if this is worth saving. Okay, and I think the rest has well and truly croaked it. That's what's left. Okay, so this is the plant and here are the roots and you can see the roots are, I don't know, they've got a very strange color to them. They're very yellowy. I wouldn't say that they feel moist or dry. They're just, I don't know. Let me show you a closer. Look how yellow that looks. I mean, that looks like it's been over fertilized. I mean, I don't know. Let me know, guys, what is that? Have you experienced this yellowing of roots? Um, from the touch, it just feels kind of quite rubbery, um, neither moist nor mushy or dry. So we can exclude all of those things. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I'm going to wash my hands very quickly. And I think I'm going to spray these guys. I'm going to put them in hydrogen peroxide for a little bit. So I think I'm going to put these into some hydrogen peroxide in this glass. So yeah, I'm going to do half and half, half water. glass was a bit dirty but yeah so half water high half hydrogen peroxide let's just take off hopefully it's gonna be enough all of them 
So yeah, I'm just gonna let those chill for a bit. So here are the cuttings. This one that doesn't have many cuttings, I think I'm gonna leave it in water. And once these are fit busy fizzing away and uh, hopefully getting some bounce back, those will just sit in a glass of water as well to grow some roots. Oh, it's sunny. Okay, so I brought over some pond. Some clean lecker balls. Some pots. And my scooper. So I'm pretty much organised. And I've got some rooting hormone. My favourite one, which I'm actually quite low in. I do need to buy some more of this, the great white. Always going on about it. Okay, let's try and save this baby. So I could use this and then it's at least got drainage. Um, or I could just put it straight into a plastic cup. But normally I would make drainage holes on the sides of these parts. And I haven't done that. But if I want to clip it to the board, I need to do that. Oh, this one's got holes in the very bottom, so we can't use that one. Okay, we're getting we're, we're getting somewhere. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this one, and I just have to be very careful with my wood train. But I suppose down the line I can always add some holes with some soldering with my soldering iron. So these are clay pebbles. So they're often called lecker. And I'm gonna put some those on the bottom. So it's got like a little reservoir. I think it's quite nice. Come on. And then yeah, I just need a layer of pawn. So this pawn has already been mixed up. It's actually repurposed. Um, I boiled it all up. I'm just picking out what looks dodge. Yeah, I boiled this pan up for about half an hour um, just to kind of clean out any kind of potential pests and just to get any algae off and just to make it nice and clean really. It's, it's a mix of the pond that I like to use with perlite. So I like to add perlite to my, to my mixes. There we go. Just to make it a little lighter, especially since most of my cuttings will have quite small, delicate roots to begin with. So I don't want anything too heavy or too chunky. Take them out. So yeah. Oh, this one is the one with the soggy bottom. So I think I'm going to cut that off. And I just line up the roots. Woo, hello. What's going on? Like so. them in and then just top it up oh you can't see anything Hopefully, oh my gosh, I'm barely breathing whilst doing this. I'm so, I'm still really freaked out that I've lost such a beautiful big plant. I mean, I know I still have parts of it, which is fantastic, but <gasps> let me just show you the blooms again. I mean, you know, it is a sad day. And you know what else? I forgot to put rooting hormone on which is very annoying so yeah she's kind of cute though i'm gonna water it 
and I'm going to be using some of this fertilised water. I'll probably only need about that much. And I'm going to put some of this great white in there. Bitty bit. There we go. And I'm just going to get as close to the stems as I can, really. Brilliant. There we go, and you can see the reservoir is full as well. Let me see if I can find a little clip for this thing. Found it. So yeah, I'm just gonna slap a clip in the back like that, and I'm gonna go and pin this up on the board, but oh, what a relief. Pinned those two guys on the board, and it has been about 10 or 20 minutes since I put these in water. I think I'm just gonna leave them in there for a little bit longer. But yeah, you can see it's still kind of like fizzing away. So I might actually leave it like this for a little bit longer, I don't know. Maybe I should leave it like this for about an hour. Anyway, I thought I'd bring over two other Hoyas that I've also been a little concerned about. Let's start with this one. So this is my Hoya Nan Nuna Pink. And the leaves are kind of looking yellow. They're not the unusual sharp green. I mean, they've never been a dark green, but they're just kind of looking fairly unhappy. And also what I've noticed, let me see if I can spot one. Uh, ah, here we go. So you can see on this leaf here, the one that I have in my hand. If I get some light on it. But it's kind of wrinkly. I don't know if you can see that. So it's dehydrated. I did, um, I have been watering the plant, so it's not like I've been, I've not over watered. I've kind of just stuck to its normal routine, even though it's still, it has been showing kind of this wrinkly looking thing that it's doing at the moment. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about. But at the same time, it is pushing out. It pushed out this new shoot. It has got some new leaves, like it's got a new one right there. So I think we can kind of get rid of the idea that it might be mites, although that was the first thing that kind of came to mind. It did have me bug at one stage and I just found nothing major, just like one or two kind of here and then. I did spray the whole plant. So that could have something to do with it because I, I didn't put it back into its normal light, but it was in, it was kind of in low light or medium light, let's say, because I normally put this in high light. Again, we've got another one wrinkling there. And then on the back, I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of discolored on the back. It's really, really quite wrinkly. Um, so I think with this guy, I might take some cuttings just in case. Which is very sad because it's just beginning to trail. But instead of just like waiting, I think it's probably the best thing to do for the plant. It's very sad. Um, but I, I just don't know what else it could possibly be because if it were mites, then it wouldn't be growing. There's no mealy bug on there. It has been treated. Um, I can see kind of like some little dots on these leaves here. 
don't know if you can see that. But yeah, there's kind of like some dots on the back of that one. So, I mean, that could be... Yeah, I think that um, my only way forward at the moment would be to take some cuttings. If I want to save this plant, if I want to keep the part of this plant for myself, then I think this is the only thing I can do for it. Oh, it's so sad. Look at it. It's so pretty. Actually, before I start chopping away on that one, um, I also want to show you, this is my Crohaniana, Crohaniana um, Black. Um, it did come looking kind of like wrinkly like this. But those leaves should be kind of closer to the pot because since then obviously it's grown all these new leaves. Again, it's looking dehydrated. So it could be the different fertilizer. Maybe it just doesn't like it. It could be that. Um, I'm going to cut off the bits that just don't look particularly nice. Did I just put everything away? I did. I tied it up. Hang on. Okay, yeah. So, I think I want to use these ones. The scissors. And I'm going to cut... Oh, it's got a new leaf though. So one of the leaves are, let me see if I get in there. Can you see that there's a new leaf right near my finger? Right there. Although this one's croaking it. Oh, it just fell off. That one's growing out of there. I think I'm going to still chop this bit off. I am. I'll, I'll leave the new leaf. And I'm just going to get rid of any leaves that kind of look unattractive. Um, and yeah, so I don't know. Hang on. Let's see if I can get in there. So here you can see again, like there's one piece that's kind of dried up this bit here. Um, and again, it's happened here like it's kind of dried on the tips like but more than just a tip so I don't know what that's all about let's just cut that off let's give it a little tug in the pot and see if the roots so I don't think there's anything wrong with the roots it might just be that it does not like this new change of fertilizer um, the leaves that I'm pulling off are like the eldest ones. Let me give this a water. I haven't actually watered my Hoyas for about two weeks because it is winter and I was a little bit freaked out when I woo, when I started seeing um, yellowing leaves. Like, have I been overwatering? It's very unusual for me to overwater. Anyway, it's got some water in the tank now. I'm gonna go and stick this back on the board. I've given it a good old check for pests and stuff, but I, I'm not seeing anything. Um, and it did grow a new leaf and it's got another one growing right here. So, I mean, it is it's quite tiny, but under there. And here as well, so I mean it is growing, is another thing it could be is that I'm not leaving my heating on at night and it does get to, it goes down as, as low as 15 centigrade. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, it does go down as low as 15 centigrade, so it could be that. I was contemplating buying a cabinet so I could put the Hoyas in there because a lot of the new Hoyas, the ones that I got this year, um, they've never really experienced my home in the colder temperatures. And last year I was leaving heating on just all the time and my bills were just crazy. So I thought this year I'd see if my plants could adapt to lower temperatures at night, at least at night. 
Oh, and this one's got a pedangle as well. Let's see if I can get in there. Can you see that? Right there. It's got a nice chunky pedangle that's been around for a while, actually. It's never bloomed. Um, I'm going to go and put this one back as well. I do have, actually, maybe I'll give it a quick spray. So, yeah, I've got this orchid mist, which I bought from the store that I work at. And um, it says to use it two or three times per week. Um, it supports healthy growth and heavy prolonged flowering. Ooh. So, and here it tells you that it has like a pest repellent in there, um, nutrient solution, growth enhancer. It's got a plant tonic and a leaf conditioner. This could be a good move actually. So I'm gonna give it a bit of a mist. Up. just let that dry off actually before i put it back on the pin board right now are we really going to cut this plant <gasps> i'm just really worried that i'm going to lose this plant so yeah i am i'm going to go ahead and just cut it as far back as i can i guess Oh my goodness. Um. Ooh. Okay, I'm just gonna cut it. Uh, uh. I'm gonna cut you there. One. And this one, which looks kind of wrinkly. It does. So, I mean, it's still hanging. This bit doesn't look particularly great. And then this bit I know is pushing out new stuff. So should I cut this bit? Or should I just leave it? I don't know. I might just come back another day if it's looking like it's deteriorating further. Actually, I'm going to cut this one as well. There we go. Yeah, if it looks, if this looks like it's deteriorating any further, then I'll come back and I'll trim off more of it. But for now, that's that dude. And it's been currently living in my bedroom under plant lights, but because I didn't know what was wrong with it, I wanted to kind of keep it separate and generally my my bedroom is serves like a little plant hospital there's not too many plants in there but um yeah i've got two propagation boxes so those are like just generally like they're just plants that are propagating and then i've got about five plants in there that are either pest prone like my syngonium albo um i'm really contemplating getting rid of that plant because oh it's my phone i'll be back in a minute ah i'm back that was my mum um okay so Tra-la! that's the plant i'm gonna give it a spray of this stuff as well because it does say it's got a pest repellent in there so good stuff we go and then should I soak these guys I don't know so I did um, dip the ends into some cinnamon someone was actually asking me recently why I do that um, cinnamon has got some really great properties so it's got an antibacterial thing about it which is fantastic so obviously when I've cut the plant I don't want it to get infected by anything it's like an open wound um, but it also does help it this end to callus over a little bit quicker so this one's, got, ooh, this one's got quite a nice long stem to it so that is going to be easy to propagate whereas this one for instance does not 
So I might remove two of the leaves, which is very sad, I know, but we'll all grow new ones. So yeah, I just took those off. Just so that it's got a slightly longer stem so that when it goes in into a bottle or it'll probably go in here. Um, that it will just stand up, not flop around and stuff. So that's those two. Actually, I just want to show you something a little bit closer. So again, I'm seeing those red dotty things. Can you see that on the backs of the leaves here? So that does concern me. And it's on a lot of them. Now, I did see something somewhere where they were talking about these dots, especially on Hoyas. But of course, um, I can't actually remember. I mean, it's, I wasn't kind of watching the video for that specific reason. And uh, I don't know, this one doesn't have any. So maybe I should keep that one separate from those two because this one has none at the back. So yeah, I think that's probably what I would do. And I think with this one, I might put it in a propagation thingy. I might actually put it in here. So in this little terrarium of mine, let's just move some of this stuff. Um, yeah, in here I have like a pink princess and a Pachira aquatica and I have been meaning to take this little dude out. And it's, oh, it's rooty. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Wow, look, the whole lot's come out. Okay. And then maybe I'll just find the Pachira Aquatica somewhere else though, because it has kind of outgrown this lovely little space where the roots are just everywhere. There we go. How cute is that? And then I've got this little pink princess, so I'll just bung all of that back in again as best I can. Oh, I did have a Hoya in here as well. Yeah, this one, I don't know what it is though. Okay, let's put you back in. And then I'm going to just slip this in the back. I mean, it's going to be a little tall, but nah, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. And then this little higher, what is this? I don't know what that is. I'm going to plonk that back in as well. So yeah, it's in there, it's in the back. I have loads of humidity, so I'll get a chance to root all the way up and down, and then I can separate all of it. Yeah, I think that's gonna be a winner. Very good, happy with that. I'll just do this very quickly. So just to set up my little Pachira Aquatica. this little orchid part and some spag and moss the bottom and then put that there so it's still in spag and moss 
little baby Pachira Aquatica and then I'll probably just put a dome over the top of this. Actually, what am I going to use? Yeah, and then I'll just use a glass like this and just put a dome over it. Put it back in the window. Maybe I've got something a little bit wider than that. But yeah, she's good to go. A little bit of water. Happy. Next. Let's see what these guys are doing. I mean, it's still busy fizzing away. Let's have a look. Some of these are very short and actually probably should go into some sort of propagation bin with some sphagnum moss in a pot, possibly. So luckily I've got the sphagnum moss out. This one is definitely long enough to just kind of sit in a glass of water. Uh, which way up is this one? So this is meant to go this way up. And as you can see, the stem is very short. So that one will have to go on to sphagnum moss. Again, a little shorty. Another little shorty. And one longer piece. So I found my clear Tupperware thingy. It's got a clear lid as well. Brilliant. So I'm actually contemplating putting all of those cuttings into. Or should I leave this one out? Mm. No, I think I'm just going to throw them all into the propagation bin. This hydrogen peroxide, I'm going to use for that, but that's also going to go in the propagation bin. Yay, I'm so pleased I found this. I mean, the cupboards, so I recently redid all of my cupboards where I've got like soil and stuff. I call my plant stuff and pots and so much stuff. Um, and it's already a massive mess. So, I'm really surprised I managed to find that. I'm actually more organized than I thought I was. Okay. So yeah, I've just put a layer of sphagnum moss and I'm just gonna plonk them all in and just hope for the best, really. It's a little bit better, hopefully. You can kind of see what's going on. Yeah, so I'm just gonna plonk all of these in here. Okay, they're all in there now and they're all kind of touching the sphagnum moss. Oh, I did want to get this one in there as well. I'm going to leave that in there for quite a bit longer and I'll probably just put that in the box off screen. Close this up and then I'm going to put this under a plant light, one of my many plant lights. Not sure exactly which one at the moment. Brilliant, I'm really happy with that. So excuse the drilling sound, but I just thought I'd show you the pin board. Um, so we've got the new Crohanianum that we just potted up just there. That's the other one just there. So eventually they'll get put together. Um, the Crohanianum black is there, looking fairly happy. Yeah, that's the pin board. So I put these two um, Nuna pink Hoya cuttings in this quite shallow pot um, because, I don't know, is this going to work? But the only thing is the leaves are kind of touching the surface as well. So I don't know if that's going to work. Excuse me whilst I faff around. So I'll do it like that and I'll just fill that up with some water and then this cutting from my Crohanian and black I've actually decided I'm going to put it into my terrarium so it's 
had like quite a bit of time in that hydrogen peroxide. Plonk you in. So you probably won't be able to see that, but they're now living in this container, which is fantastic. So the high, high humidity will get a chance to root, hopefully, fingers crossed. And yeah, I'll keep you updated. So that is all of the lessons that I have learned recently, very, very recently. And I do hope that this video got to you before this has happened to you and that you can learn from my mistakes. If not, if you find that you are also currently going through some little scary horror stories with your Hoyas and you're unsure of what's going on, or maybe you do know exactly what's going on, and please do share that in the comments down below. I'd love to know what is out there. <laughs> I'm constantly worried about the idea of getting flat mites. Why is it so noisy in here? Oh, I've got the window open. I have the window open, by the way. And now there's an aeroplane. Anyway, yeah, um, I've heard some horror stories about the flat mites. And it's definitely one thing that I'm constantly in fear of getting. <laughs> I love my Hoyas so much. I really don't want them to get flat mites. Let's all pray together that none of our Hoyas get flat mites. Um, do let me know though if you have gone through that experience and how you dealt with it. Um, I've heard that sulfate is the best way forward and not to dilute it just to go hardcore. Actually, I think people use a paintbrush. Anyway, I'm waffling on now. Um, what else do, did I want to know about? Yeah, if specifically the Crohaniana, Crohania. My voice feels like it needs to be a bit longer. The Crohania-esque um, Super Silver or any of them, actually. Um, if you have had a similar experience after pruning your plant, um, do let me know what your experience was like and if you've managed to prevent that whole stem that, you know, kind of going, well, kicking the bucket really, just going brown and kicking the bucket. If you've found a way to prevent that from happening, I did use cinnamon on the tips, so I have no idea of why that happened. Um, the other Hoyas did not do that when I pruned them. It was literally just that one plant that did that. Um, and that was before I did that crazy repot. Oh yeah, the yellow roots. What was that? Why were they so yellow? I'm actually just gonna put a little shot up because that was, that was creepy weird. That was very strange. Did have a little sniff afterwards. Didn't smell of anything. So I don't know. I don't know what to tell you guys. They weren't smushy. They weren't dry. They were just yellow and kind of rubbery feeling. Yeah. Thanks again for hanging out. Um, if it's your first time here and you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that. Everybody, please switch on your notification bells, especially since I am planning on moving my days, switching from Sunday to Saturday, possibly. Uh, let me know how you feel about that also. Have a fabulous week. I will see you here again very soon. Until then, bye.